Ну, 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 Well, it was interesting. Interesting is a good description. Did you enjoy it? Or did you feel like a merry-go-round? Well, pretty much so. Uh, did the search and rescue team locate you right away? Uh, yes. But you were quite far away. No. That was like an unusual point of landing. And how do you feel? I'm all right. I'm all right. Would you like to go to space one more time? I'd love to. Because my flight was very short, only 10 days. I would like to go on a long duration flight and be there for six months, just like Yuri Ivanovich. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, first of all, please allow me to congratulate you on the safe landing. The land of Kustanai and people of Kustanai sending you their warm regards and are happy to greet you because Kustanai is our space harbor from 1964. You are the 27th space crew that we received and today we have uh, people of Kustanai gathered here to greet you. We would like to say that it's not the first time now that the representatives of various countries have been on board the space station, and that's why we believe that cosmonauts and astronauts are very brave people, we know that. And I'm very happy to greet the representative of South Korea, Soyan, and this, is, this was a very brave action on her behalf. And this is the great event in the history of the American space exploration. It was the first time when the a woman was the ISS crew commander. And I also would like to say that considering her first space flight, uh, so she's beat the record and now she spent the most time in space if we adapt her both space missions.
ISS program manager Mike Suffredini. Mike, uh, an eventful day, but uh, one with a happy ending. Uh, your thoughts as you uh, learned with the rest of us on the helicopters about the ballistic landing and uh, the outcome uh, with Peggy heading home now. Well, let's see, you're always uh, uh, concerned about the crew on any entry vehicle, and so uh, when uh, we had a few moments there, we weren't exactly sure whether they had done a ballistic entry or something else, and uh, so we were very happy when we, when we heard that they had done a ballistic entry, and in fact, even more so when uh, when we got word uh, from the crew that they were safe and sound. Of course, they're on their way back now uh, on the helicopters here to Kustanai, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing them here in just a few moments. You're, um I'm always struck by the choreography of the uh, the Russian search and recovery forces and how quickly they uh, they can mobilize into uh, a non-conventional situation. Uh, what were you thinking about? Because uh, you're very familiar with all of this choreography. Yeah, they were. They're a very adaptive organization, and so uh, they, it was. Um, the most interesting thing about this is it's not easy to know exactly where the Soyuz spacecraft is, and it, it seems like uh, a spacecraft coming out of the sky under parachutes is an easy thing to see, but in fact it's actually more difficult than you think. So there were some moments where they weren't exactly sure where the spacecraft was yet and hadn't quite located, and at that point um, they had to be very flexible and figure out, okay, if it's this, what do we do? If it's that, what do we do? Um, but they're very nimble on their toes, and they're an outstanding organization, this team that we've worked with now for uh, several entries, and uh, always impressive. And so, uh, yeah, I was in the middle of it today, and, and uh, they showed us how good they are today once again. There will be some work to do, obviously, on a postscript, uh, this being the second consecutive ballistic landing that a Soyuz has encountered. Uh, any thoughts about uh, what uh, might occur as uh, an, an investigation or an inquiry might, uh, a technical inquiry might be mounted in this regard? Well, our Russian colleagues are very thorough, so I would expect another commission to be uh, appointed and uh, a thorough review of the data and, uh, uh, and uh, a recommendation for uh, uh, what we should do to make sure we don't have one in, in the future. Of course, a number of anomalies can call a cause a ballistic entry, and a ballistic entry is, a, is a, if you will, a normal contingency mode, so it's a perfectly safe entry mode. Uh, but in spite of that, we don't really want to put the crews through them, and, and we want to know what anomalies uh, have occurred that cause us to be in the ballistic reentry. And so uh, I would expect the, the same setup, a thorough investigation uh, through a commission, a recommendation for uh, um, how to repair or recover from uh, this, uh, this whatever this anomaly was. Uh, and of course, if it's related to the last anomaly, uh, that'll uh, add data to, to uh, the last ballistic degree entry as well. And finally, Mike, uh, when all of a sudden uh, Expedition 16 is uh, in the record books, uh, and it is one for the books, uh, what are your thoughts about the legacy that Peggy and her various crewmates uh, left on the International Space Station? Well, it's going to be hard to believe that uh, any crew um, will ever uh, have the opportunity to do what Increment 16 did. Uh, this is one of the few increments where all of the plans we had made, all of the construction uh, that we planned for, the, the arrival installation of Node 2, a number of EVAs to configure it uh, for the arrival of the Columbus module, of course the arrival of the Columbus module, uh, the installation of the, um, of the uh, Japanese uh, uh, logistics module, the uh, SPDM, uh, all of that coming on board, all of those flights coming within that increment as we planned, and then of course the, the arrival of a brand new spacecraft, the ATV. So it was, like you said, a historical increment, and it'll be one that'll be uh, tough to, uh, to beat in the future.